Hey all, today I want to talk about driving a little more again. And this will focus a lot around all the different ways a car can behave over the course of a lab, because I think for many beginners and also intermediate drivers can still be very confusing when the car suddenly changes its behavior from one corner to another and you can't really trace back where this comes from. Sometimes the car will be very stable, sometimes the car suddenly behaves very instable and you're always on the back foot. So what I came up with is, and have to say this is entirely subjective, so don't take this any of this literally, okay? This is only to plant an idea in your head of when a car most likely behaves in a stable way and predictable way, and when the car becomes rather snappy and instable and very hard to control. This is by no means um, a final idea or whatever, but we're really just on about the, the tendencies here, okay? So we're looking at different inputs in relation to how stable the car is. And you can ignore the numbers. All you want to look at really is that a red box indicates a situation where the car is most likely or has a tendency to be unstable. This table is probably not true for all cars, probably not true for all setups. Some cars are inherently more unstable, some are inherently more stable. So again, just apt to plant an idea and every car will show these kind of traits and behaviors to some degree, some more, some less, all right? So let's dig into this table and you don't really have to like save it right away or whatever. It's just right now to plant the first idea. Say we're in a situation where we have full throttle, okay? And we have no steering, obviously the car is stable. As long as we don't steer, the car is going to be perfectly stable, no matter what the input on the pedal is going to be, whether or not you're full throttle, full braking, or anything in between. As long as you don't steer, the car is always perfectly stable, which is the first column here. Again, ignore the numbers, just look at the color, green indicating the car is stable, red indicating the car is instable. Now, let's make a little, well, let's go through the first row just real quick, okay? When you're full, 100% throttle, it's most likely in any scenario that you're steering, the car will remain more or less stable. If you turn a little bit, yeah, the car can be a tiny bit, just a tiny bit instable, especially when you're changing directions. But if you crank the wheel all the way to the sides, you're most likely in the very, very stable or understeery zone again. Keep reducing the throttle and you can see the with with steering applied the car gets into a situation where it's ever more instable but gets more stable again the more steering you apply let's go down to very little throttle or zero throttle right away and you can see with no steering okay the car is still going to be very stable but as soon as you start turning the wheel with, with zero throttle applied and the differential open and all the forces acting on the car other than the engine brake, then you suddenly get into the red area where the car is rather unstable and you can only get stability back by, well, turning a tiny bit too much or what we now call bro steering, which is just kind of doing what you did in your PlayStation back then, just put the analog stick or even if you just use the button on the PlayStation 1 all the way to the side, maybe even lean with your upper body, sorry, docking, and turn the controller to the side. Additionally, that's what we call bro steering, meaning you steer way too much than the front tires actually need, and that makes the car stable again. Now, add a little bit of brake to that, and we'll come to a situation where the car, again, will become a tiny bit more unstable. And now maybe it does make sense to take a tiny look at the thing above here because this is where I'm where we have to make a differentiation in low speed situations any corner any straight the car is less affected of all of this however if we take this to different speed zones in particular high speed zones then this suddenly looks quite a bit different. And just to make that difference clear here, there's the two tables, the low speed and the high speed table. The very simple thing I did here was just to crank up the colors a bit there, the rest is the same. But just to indicate that during high speed, all the stability and instability situations the car is going through is going to be even more pronounced. So for example, take a corner like Puhon or so where you naturally 
kind of tend to trail break into a corner at very high speed, 170, 180 kilometers an hour. And with very little brake applied into the corner, you're in a situation where the car is extremely unstable. However, different situation, same corner. If we use a lot of braking before the corner already, it will suddenly, like the car will suddenly transform into something that is a lot more stable because now we are in the zero throttle, zero braking zone with maybe a lot of steering applied even and suddenly the car is a lot more stable than it was with a tiny bit of braking applied into the corner here. Same situation, or not same situation, but similar situations can be true in say Blanchiment, for example. If you go through Blanchiment flat out, it's probably the most easy corner you can find in the game. However, if you make the mistake, could be traffic ahead of you, could be a crash ahead of you, could just be a weird moment of insecurity. If you lift the throttle into Blanchiment, suddenly you're in the situation where you have a very vulnerable, very unstable car. And then suddenly the rear just steps out a tiny bit and you tend to overreact and suddenly you find the car on the side of the road and should be very hard to catch. We saw that in AOR last week as well, where well, several Hondas, I believe, just died in the corner because they made that mistake of the small insecurity leading to off throttle and counter steer movement and that eventually kills the car. You need to absolutely stay full throttle and then the car will be perfectly stable throughout such situations. Then just to kind of prove my point here a bit, let's go back a little to the low speed corners is, for example, Brussels or, or no name to, to name a few, where when you let the car just coast through the corner, then the front end most likely doesn't have the maximum amount of grip. And in those low speed areas, we do want this kind of instability, meaning that we're coming around. And then we're at the point where we are going for like 10, 20, maybe 30%, just tiny, very tiny brake inputs that suddenly are able to pull the car a tiny bit back to the inside when while, while steering is applied, right? But if you apply too much steering and you try to get the car into the corner a little more with a bit of brake or trail braking applied, the front end is just unlikely to respond because you're already using all the front end grip to do your bro steering technique. However, what can help you in one corner, in one situation, might be quite detrimental in another situation. So let's just imagine Barcelona turn one and you use your typical braking point, you brake in a straight line, the car is going to be very straight. Remember the, the chart, right? Full braking applied most likely will lead the car to be rather stable. But as soon as you start the trail braking and you start to turn in, sooner or later, the car will go into the situation where it tends to become understeery. Let's just bring it up once more, right? So 100% braking, steering is straight, the car is perfectly stable. We start steering a little with 100% brake applied, the car is still stable. But now as we decrease the braking, we're getting ever closer to the zone where the car is going to be instable. And this is exactly what happens when you release the brake too quickly or too uncautious or whatever. You are necessarily at some point going through this zone of instability. And this is what happens a lot and where people struggle a lot with trail braking and gets worse the further the engine is to the back in the car pretty much right so all the more the uh the more the trail braking or the the final release of the brake gets more tricky the further the engine travels to the back so on the mid-engine cars the release of the brake on, on many cars in the game will lead to the rear have a tendency to snap and be really loose. And on the Porsche, obviously it's the worst where the car has a tendency to, well, really be very loose into any corner unless throttle is applied, which brings us to another thing. Every time we have throttle applied, the, or the more throttle we have applied, the more stable the car will become. Of course, this differs a bit into the corner, out of the corner. There's a gazillion more situations we could go through again just on about a tendency here so we can also have situations where we go into a corner say barcelona turn three typically or any other corner really as soon as we have throttle applied the car gives you the feeling of being rather stable and predictable because of how the car works usually it's the differential lock it's a bit of the weight traveling to the back it's a bit of in the high speed scenario 
the downforce being more neutral when the throttle is applied and the front isn't allowed as close to the ground. There are more situations however where the core is stable and that is if we go to the very side of the chart here and this every time you apply a lot of steering angle it is really difficult to get the car to turn or to get the car to be instable on purpose or not. So if you and I mean I just took the 90 degree here could be 100 or 120 or whatever the, the idea is the more you steer the more likely the car will become very very stable completely regardless of what you do on the pedals right if you just crank the wheel 180 degrees to the side there's nothing left in the car to respond to any throttle or brake inputs um, and that is what we also can see a lot in coaching um, that um, there, there's people who do have trouble finding more lap time because they're constantly keeping the car in the very stable zone zone either by turning way too much or by applying throttle in the corner and they are all the time moving in this area here all around the red boxes and that's a very typical thing for beginners to differentiate that the car behaves differently with different inputs at different speeds um, and that really is what the video was supposed to be all about. So I hope there was some information in there. Um, let's discuss this further in the comments. Do like this video if it gave you an idea. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. And here's a little ad talk for uh, the Popometer website. So see you very soon. Over the last couple of months, we've been developing our own telemetry software around ACC. It's called Popometer.io and it's geared towards everyone who seriously wants to improve their driving and lap times. We are working together with a lot of professional esports players and engineers on the game of ACC who are creating data packs that always includes a setup and telemetry data. This telemetry data then is visualized on our platform and very easy to access. You pretty much don't need to do anything. It's much easier than Motec, for example. And you can view side by side what the inputs are that you do and what the inputs are of a professional esports driver. Additionally, we have found a way to visualize the line, which makes it really easy to compare where you're placing the car and eventually where you are losing the time. So if you're a very determined sim racer who wants to improve their lap times, probably worth checking out popometer.io and give it a go.